On today's episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the U.S. and Royal Navies have crewing problems. I'm your host, Sal McCogliano. Welcome to today's episode. So you may be familiar with the fact that both the U.S. Navy and the Royal Navy are ha having a hard time recruiting sailors to serve in there. What you may not know is they're having a hard time recruiting and retaining civilian merchant mariners. That's right. Both the Royal Navy and the U.S. Navy employ commercial merchant mariners to sail vessels for them. In the case of the Royal Navy, it is the Royal Fleet Auxiliary. In case of the U.S. Navy, it's the Military Sealift Command. And the role that merchant mariners play in both navies is essential to those navies' ability to execute their missions. And right now, they're having a hard time not just crewing them, but retaining them. And in case of a peer-on-peer -peer conflict, there may not be enough merchant mariners to sustain the navies in combat. We're going to take a look at that story and the latest on the Royal Navy's Royal Fleet Auxiliary officers announcing an industrial action. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell to so be alerted about new videos as they come out. So this is the story over in G Captain Royal Fleet Auxiliary to begin industrial action over pay dispute from Mike Schuller. The officers at the RFA are initiating a planned industrial action on Saturday, June 1st, following a dispute on compensation. The action coordinated by the Nautilus International Union comes as a response to a real terms pay cut of over 30 percent since 2010. Now this is not a strike, this is an action just short of strike. The officers of the Royal Fleet Auxiliary will restrict their responsibilities to duties directly related to their job title but will continue to observe all safety guidelines and policies to ensure the safety of individuals, vessels, and the environment. So what exactly is the Royal Fleet Auxiliary and what does it do? So this is the RFA website, it gives you a good overview here on the vessels, beautiful vessels. I've worked with the Royal Fleet Auxiliary in the past, a absolute professional organization, if there's ever been one, created back in 1905. They man vessels that look very similar to Royal Navy vessels. They are the auxiliary vessels. Give you an idea. Here are some vessels that are in the fleet. They run a series of landing ship docks, the Cardigan Bay, the Line Bay, the Mounts Bay. You see a vessel there like uh, Fort Victoria, which is their solid supply vessel or their auxiliary oiler replenishment. This is the vessel very similar to our supply class AOE that provides both fuel and stores. They have a new vessel, the Proteus, that's used for survey and surveillance of underwater cables. And one of their key vessels, been around forever, is the RFA Argus, which is both the primary casualty receiving ship for the RFA. It also serves as a forward operating base for them. And then they operate a fleet of tankers, the four Tide class tankers, beautiful vessels built in South Korea, and then two older vessels of the Wave class. Now, what is the RFA specifically? Well, let's go to the RFA in nine swipes, according to their site. So this is how the RFA describes himself. They are the civilian support branch for the Royal Navy. Their personnel are all employees of the Ministry of Defense, very similar to what we see in the U.S. Navy's Military Sealift Command. They support the Royal Navy ships all over the world. Wherever you see Royal Navy ships, you'll see RFA ships. They deliver supplies and fuel to keep them operational. They support everything from conflict to counter piracy, including law enforcement and evacuation. Their personnel work across three core branches, basically three areas. First is technical, the engineering branch. These are mechanical, electrical engineers. There are the deck officers that pilot the vessels from point A to point B, conduct underway replenishment. There's logistics who handle the supply side of it. And that is the Royal Fleet Auxiliary, except for one key thing, and that is they are paid crap. Uh, they are not paid very well by the Royal Navy. Now, when you look at what the Royal Navy Fleet Auxiliary gets paid, you got to be careful about looking at that. So this is the website here for a qualified deck officer in the RFA. The job role went right to their career site. This is what they show the they do. And important here, we're going to look at a glance at what they do. Pay 37,700 pounds. That is about $48,000 US. And you'll see that they can get 
up to about eighty-six thousand dollars, so over a hundred thousand, eighty-six thousand pounds, almost a hundred thousand dollars, if they promote up to the level of captain. They have a pension system, and their leave is actually pretty good. Twenty-one days of paid leave for every month served on board ship. The issue here is the pay. The Royal Fleet Auxiliary has not received a pay raise since 2010. 14 years. That was great pay in 2010. It has not kept up. It is at least 30% behind of where it needs to be. They should be paying paid at least, at least 12,000 pounds more than what they are currently receiving. Now, in terms of average wages of people in the United Kingdom, this is right par for an average wage but this is a highly technical skill set that you're talking about this is not just the average type job plus it involves being away from home there's a lot of issues associated with it. there's dangers associated with it too and yet they're getting 37,700 pounds per year as their starting salary the same salary they had 14 years ago and this is what's causing the union for the officers of the royal fleet auxiliary to announce their industrial uh, slowdown not on strike the vessels are still out there the crews are still working out there but this is a step just short of a strike they pulled their members this is what the members wanted to do now if they don't get a response that's going to be a big issue now there's an election coming up in great britain one of the reasons that we think they did this action was to get the attention of the administration whichever administration is going to come in here whichever party wins in parliament there so hopefully the rfa is on track to do it Ironically, at the same time that the RFA is having this problem, the U.S. Navy's Military Sealift Command, MSC, is having a similar issue. So this was in the Navy League Sea Power last month, and it discusses specifically a shortage of mariners putting a strain on the Military Sealift Command. They quote the commander of Military Sealift Command here, Rear Admiral Phil Sobak, there are not enough mariners coming into the industry. Our shortfall is in the middle of the senior positions within our licensed mariners. We need people that already have the certifications of licensed mariners, chief mates specifically, but we also need to attract the junior people. Now those third class mariners with the certificates they get from school and start building our workforce from within so the military seal of command is short of merchant mariners much like the rfa the military seal of command crews the auxiliary vessels of the u.s navy as a matter of fact one out of every five ships in the u.s navy 60 out of the 300 ships that are in the u.s navy have merchant mariner crews on board. This is the tabletop of the MSC fleet for 2024. The ships on the left, the combat logistics force vessels, these are the underway replenishment ships. These ships all have what are called civil service mariners. These are merchant mariners in the direct employ of the U.S. Navy. Also ships in the fleet support, the expeditionary fast transports, the hospital ships, the rescue and salvage, the subtenders, the tugs. Those also have them. And then many of the other ships shown here have contract mariners on board them. This is from the MSC annual review. The MSC employs 6,000 civil service mariners to fill 5,000 billets on board their ships. So they have for every five positions, six people. That is not enough to sustain a pool of mariners for the vessels that they have. They employ about 1,100 contract mariners to fill out their other vessels. But the key here are those civil service mariners, those underway replenishment vessels that refuel ships like USNS Supply and USNS Kanawa, which are right now out in the Red Sea supporting the Eisenhower Battle Group. There are not enough merchant mariners on board. And you got to ask the question, well, is it the same problem that the RFA has? No. It's the opposite problem. This is the wanted page for the Military Seal of Command. Uh, take a look at some salaries right here. First officer, $222,921 with a $44,188 bonus. So the money seems to be pretty good. Let's take a look at that starting deck officer, similar to what we saw with the RFA. So this is the third officer position. This is akin to that starting deck officer in the RFA. Remember, we were looking at about 37000 
thousand pounds that equated to about forty eight thousand dollars well the average salary for a third mate in military seal of command is a hundred and fifty six thousand five hundred and two dollars with a thirty five thousand six hundred and eighty dollar bonus eighty eight dollar bonus if they stay on board for two years well hang on a minute sal that sounds like great money why is that a problem it sounds like you can get a lot of money sailing for the military seal of command it makes me wonder what the hell am i doing why am i not back out there i got a second mate's license i could be making some good cash out there more than i get paid being in academia i can tell you the problem is remember that little tiny fine print in the rfa where it said for every month at sea you're off for 21 days that's not it with military seal of command I give you the leave schedule for the U.S. Navy's Military Seal of Command. I sailed a long time ago, late 80s, early 90s. It's the same leave schedule it was back then that it is today. Now, they're working to change it. I'll give them this. There, there, there are changes underfoot. However, the current leave plan is based on a civil service worker. So if you are a civil service worker, and I did this. I left sailing MSC to go ashore and work at their headquarters in D.C. at the time. Today, it's down in Norfolk. I was amazed by the leave difference that's involved. So if you are a brand new third mate, third assistant engineer coming out of one of the state maritime schools or Kings Point, the leave schedule you have is this. So you're a brand new hire, you have less than three years of service. So for every two weeks of pay period, you get four hours of leave. So you get a half a day of leave for every two weeks that you work, 52 weeks in a year uh you go that to 26 and then you get a half a day for each of those peer pay periods you get 13 days of leave for the year 13 days if you sail 365 days of the year you're on board a ship for a full year you get 13 days and i can't even tell you how bad that is now it's working days so you know it's it's two and a half you know two full weeks and then a three-day work week you get off but still, that sucks. If you're a government employee, you work your eight hours at work, you have your weekends off, you have your holidays off, uh, you're home at night, uh, you may get a snow day, you have sick days you can take off. You have all these leave time that you have. On a ship, you don't have that. We know where you go when you get off work on a ship? The ship. You don't go anywhere. You walk down to your cabin and you're stuck on board. You know what you do on the weekends? You work. Every day's Groundhog Day. Every day's Monday you don't get any days off now <laughs> let's be clear there is more leave you can get shore leave so if you're a civilian mariner or civ as they call it you earn additional days of vacation so you earn shore leave a rate of one day of shore leave for every 15 calendar days on one or more extended voyages on an msc ocean going ship now that means you have to be at sea you can't be pier side you can't be sitting in the pool waiting to get your job in norfolk you have to be at sea accruing that and in the past it has been a fight to get those days now assuming full day at sea you did 365 days at sea which is not really doable but it could happen if you did the full 365 days and you earn one day of shore leave for every 15 calendar days that is an additional 24 days of leave you get 24 days plus 13, so you're at 37 days of leave. You have got over a month of leave. You have been at sea, at work, constantly for 365 days. That is a unsurvivable program. Now, MSC has announced that their tour of duty on board a ship is four months. You'll go on board four months, and then you are guaranteed two months off. However, number one, you're not on board for four months. You're on board for probably six months. Why? Because for every five positions, there's six people. And there's not enough rotation for it. For you to have enough people to do a four and two, if you had 5,000 positions, you would need 7,500 merchant mariners, not 6,000. And ideally, what you want is two people for every billet because of rotation and training and everything. You'd need... 10,000 merchant mariners. So MSC, by any measure, is 1,500 to 4,000 mariners short of where they should be. Second, that two months off, if you don't have leave during that period, you're not getting paid. 
So that max salary you saw that they were advertising, you only make it if you're actually getting paid. If you're not at sea, you're not working, you're not getting paid. So you are basically unemployed till you come back. And then you go back into a pool and you have to wait to go through the system to get kicked back out to the fleet. And what is happening is MSC, the Military Seal of Command, is the largest employer of merchant mariners in the U.S. They basically cull the state maritime academies, the Federal Maritime Academy at Kings Point for personnel. And many people, I was one, get the job with Military Seal of Command because they want to go in, get sea time, advance their license, and be master and chief engineer in no time. But what it does is burn you out. And it turns you off from not just sailing with Military Seal of Command, but sailing with the rest of the Merchant Marine. And this is why MSC has a problem with upper officers in both engineering and deck, because they're burning through their lower officers. Listen, this is not a hard problem to fix. In the case of the RFA, give them more friggin' money. Give them a pay raise. You haven't paid, give them a pay raise in 14 years. This should be a no-brainer. Give them the money. They do a fantastic job. Everyone I know who knows anybody in the Royal Fleet Auxiliary will tell you they do a great job. They are consummate mariners. Pay them their money. On the military seal of command side, hire more friggin' people. Get there. You have 6,000 mariners that crew one-fifth of the U.S. Navy. You have a third of a million sailors who crew the other 80%. Seems to be a bit of an imbalance there. I, I mean, I know there's stuff ashore and there's other things. And sailors are not mariners. They're, they're not interchangeable. Sailors rotate between a float and ashore positions. Mariners just work a float. But hire more mariners. Because if you hire more mariners, that fixes this position. This fixes it. This should have been fixed 30 years ago when I was sailing. But it hasn't been fixed. Now, it's in the process and, and we're all waiting but it really needs to be fixed now because what happens today if you get missiles flying in the Pacific with China or with Russia or with Iran, you're going to have a lot of mariners walk off. Because listen, I could take that job and go ashore and find a better job in a minute. And that's going to create a big problem. The RFA has it. The U.S. Navy has it. They both need to fix this. The Royal Fleet Auxiliary, the Military Seal of Command, both are suffering from these problems. And if the logistic ships of those fleets don't sail, you stop everything. The Eisenhower does not stay in the Red Sea catapulting off F-18s to deal with issues against the Houthi unless ships like Kanawa and Supply are there to provide fuel, food, ammunition, toilet paper, you name it. If they're not there, this doesn't happen. The one thing we should know is logistics, and we keep screwing it up. It is the bedrock of military and commercial industry. It needs to be working. And when you're not paying your workers enough or giving them leave like you should, there's going to be a problem. And you're seeing it manifest itself in the RFA. You will see it manifest itself right now in the Military Sea Lift Command. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How? Hit that super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a yearly or monthly subscriber. Until our next episode, and hello to everybody at the Royal Fleet Auxiliary and military seal of command. That's right, it's Al. What's your favorite person there? Have a great day and sail on.